The other day, I was watching this video from Linus Tech Tips, and I realized that if you're new to macOS, it is really difficult to take screenshots. People don't know how to do it or don't know the right way to do it. So that's what I want to do in this video to teach you how to take screenshots the right way. So take a look at this. Let's say that I need to take a screenshot of a certain section on my screen. The way that I personally do it is with the magic mouse. Let me bring it to my screen here real quick so you can see how this is done. And I'm just going to double click the magic mouse with the two fingers. And you're going to notice that the crosshair shows up. Now I'm just going to select the area that I want to screenshot. Let's say that I want to select only this specific part. I have it selected there. The image was copied to my clipboard directly without me doing anything. So I'm just going to paste it here and I'm just going to hit enter. And I was able to send that image in Discord. You can see the image pasted right there. And the click with the two fingers is just like a regular click. But instead of using one, you use both of them. And when you do that, the crosshair shows up on the screen and you can take the screenshots. In my specific situation, what if I want to take a screenshot of the last selected area? In my case, I just type caps lock and the letter S. You're going to notice that this shows up here on the right hand side. So the screenshot was already copied to the clipboard and I can save it as a file. If I want to, I can share it already since it's in my clipboard directly. But what if I want to take a different type of screenshot? In my specific case, if I type here caps lock A, this little window shows up. So it's just going to ask me what type of screenshot I want to take. If it's an area, full screen, window, a scrolling screenshot, a timer, or OCR. Or if I want to record the screen. This is really useful in case that you need to take screenshots with a fixed aspect ratio. I use this a lot, 16 by 9, especially if you're doing thumbnails and stuff like that. So you can just select the dimensions here and um, or set it to freeform if that's what you want. So let's say, for example, that I need to take a screenshot of a specific window. Just going to select that here and I'm just going to click on the window. The screenshot was already copied to my clipboard. If I double click on this little tool here, I am able to modify the screenshot. So I'm just going to double click there. Notice that it automatically added a border to the screenshot. You can remove that if you want to. And you can annotate the screenshot and modify it if you want here. So if I type the letter A here, I can draw an arrow. If I type the letter T, I can start typing some text, text here, or you can use any of the other items that you see here, like square circles, lines, you can blur stuff. For example, in here, you can specify or modify the settings for the blur. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can add counters with the letter C. So if you select that, it's just going to add counters pretty easily. What if I want to add a different border? I can come to this tool here. And I can select another border like this one, for example. I specify here the padding. I can round the corners. And you can see that the corners are rounded here. You can specify that to your liking. You can set this to blurred or choose a different background. What if I want to see the history of the last screenshots that I have taken? In my case, just going to type here the caps lock and then tab. This is going to show up at the top. And notice that I can navigate across the different screenshots that I have taken. And it says here, six minutes ago, seven, 11, 17 hours ago. I can hide that as well. I can restore one of the screenshots from there and I can continue editing the screenshot. Like for example, this one here, just gonna click restore. And if I double click on it here, I can keep modifying it the way that I was modifying it. Notice that I can delete this blur. I can delete this if I wanted to and uh, a lot of stuff. If I want to share this modified image with someone, I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard here, or you can do it with a shortcut. And I'm just going to paste it here. And uh, there it is. There's a lot of tools in macOS to take screenshots. The one that I personally use is Cleanshot X. It's a paid application. It's $29 one time payments with one gigabyte of cloud storage, but I don't use it that way this application also comes in setup if you scroll down you're going to notice that it's available with setup and setup does offer a seven day free trial this video is not sponsored by setup i wish it was but i do use the tool i have been using setup for i don't know over a year now i love it i know some people don't like to pay memberships i think this one is great and really useful but i do have an affiliate link i'm going to leave it down in the video description so if you want to help me keep this channel going you can start your free trial using the link that I'm going to leave down below.
before I let you go, let me quickly show you my clean shot settings so you can have a better idea. Notice that after a capture, it shows the overlay, which is the small window on the right, and it automatically copies screenshots to the clipboard. So that's where you define that. If it's a video recording, you can set it so that it automatically saves after you're done recording. If you hate the screenshot sound, which is something that I do, you can disable that sound here. So whenever you take screenshots, you're not going to listen to anything anymore. You can specify the location in which the files are saved. If it's a Windows screenshot, if you want a border or not, you can define the different shortcuts. This is the one that I mentioned. When I press caps lock and A, it shows this all in one, which allows you to execute different actions. If you want to understand how I take screenshots with caps lock A and I do all of different stuff, I use a tool in macOS called Canada, and you're going to notice that I will be using home row mods. That is something that I wanted to do with Carabiner Elements for a long time. I tried it, it didn't work out, but it is something that I'm able to do with Canada, right? So let me just type something here. Notice that to type the uppercase I, I didn't use shift, but instead the letter A here on my left hand is shift. Also the semicolon on the right is also shift, right? So just let me type a few words here. I'm testing Canada here just so you can see the typing experience which is a keyboard mapper. I would recommend you to go and check this video out and I'm going to leave it in the video description. You can configure the overlay to auto close after 30 seconds if that's what you want. You can set this close after dragging as well. What is the save button going to do? Save to the export location that you configure. You can specify the position of the overlay. If you do recordings, here are my settings just in case that you wanna take a look at them. For screenshots, the format that I choose is PNG. You can also select JPEG here. You can also set the interval for the timer. Notice that it's 10 seconds for me. The crosshair mode always enabled so that when I do a double click, it's going to show me this crosshair. My advanced settings. And finally, I just want to show you how I take screenshots with the double click. That is with another tool. It's called Better Touch Tool. And you can see the configuration here. Two finger click sends hyper zero. And I have that keyboard shortcut. So that's why the crosshair shows up when I do the two finger click. Okay, so I hope that you learned something out of this video. When I started with macOS, I really hated the way that you take screenshots traditionally. Also, the annotation tool sucks. I know there's many other tools out there that do the exact same thing. This one is a paid application, but if you know a free alternative that does every single one of the features that I mentioned, please let me know down in the comments. If you want to learn more about the Better Touch tool application that I showed, you can go and check the video that I'm going to leave up here. And remember that if you want to learn about Canada, you can go and check the video that is going to be showing down here as well. All right, till the next time.